wise in our own eyes. And it's um, part of the Purim, but it's what can block your success in Purim that we're dealing with here. See, we can block our Purim victory by becoming wise in our own eyes. Yeah. Ecclesiastes 2 verse 9 says, Then I became great and increased more than all who preceded me in Jerusalem. My wisdom also made me stand out above all others. When we are given a gift and increase in it, we begin to think in the terms of how wonderful we are. Our pride comes up. Look what I have. Instead of in meekness, and thankfulness, thanking our Father for that gift that He gave us. And it's interesting that when we go and we put, look at the wealth my great wisdom has brought to me. What have you done? Taking God out of the picture. You've definitely taken God out of the picture, but what else have you done? Exalted yourself. Exalted yourself, yes, and? Saying other people... Uh, you turned your wealth into your God. Yeah. yeah. And that you have the power to make God in your own image. Because you got the money to do it. Mm -hmm. <coughs> or we say... Look how wise I am compared to everyone else. Compared to everyone. Look how wise I am. Or even if we say, uh, look at all the new toys I've, I have compared to everyone else. I got a new... 2017 Lexus with high speed overdrive and it can go 220 miles an hour. Ooh. <laughs> More ticket speed. <laughs> Is it paid for? <laughs> Again, we go back to money. It's a matter that when you are comparing, mm -hmm. you're trying to make yourself a god in your own image. You're looking in the mirror and say, oh, how wonderful I am. Not how much I need Jesus. Need Yeshua. And, and when we do that, we stop the pure victory that's to be in our life. And there's things like that that we can be saying and not realizing what we're saying. Because we become wise in our own eyes. Now, some people, because they have had illnesses or whatever, they become wise in their own eyes because, well, I know all about this illness. Well, why are you healed? They don't know about the healing power of the stripes of Yeshua. Okay? It's all in there. They got it all controlled in their head. Destroying their Purim, mm -hmm. victory. The lot is cast against them instead of in favor of them. In verse 10, it says, And all that my eyes desired, I did not refuse them in any way. Mm -hmm. yeah. I did not withhold my heart from any pleasure, for my heart was pleased to seek pleasures because of all my labors. I found pleasure 
was my reward for all my labor. What went on? Pleasure was his God. It became his God, yes, and? So he deserved pleasure. Yeah. He, he gave himself the credit instead of God. Selfishness. He gave himself a lot of credit. Mm -hmm. Yes, and walking in the flesh, not the spirit. Definitely walking in the flesh. Well, that was all about fun, about pleasure. It wasn't about um, giving no to others. And was it meism? Meism was definitely involved. No recognition of any eternal life or godly reward for for uh, no. life. But that is often the cause of so many hardships coming in our life. It's just what he just put in here. I don't want to serve, I want to be served. Look how good I am and how much my wisdom has done. I know about these things and you don't, so you should be serving me. Arrogance. There's an arrogance, there's, a, uh, there's something else that you're not catching on to here yet. God. Yeah. He was mocking all those called by God. He was worshiping mockery. You know, that's that's uh, kind of a deadly, deadly thing to get involved with. You see. When we seek our own pleasures, we're mocking whatever God has to offer. We're not looking for Him to reward us. You say, I can reward myself with anything I want to do. Anything I want to do. And He did, He tried everything. See that today everywhere people mock those who worship Jesus. Yeah. When we say that we deserve a break today or a pleasure because of the work we have done or might do, we're getting into the same mode that Solomon entered when he went away from God. then we are not waiting for our Father to reward us or for Jesus to defeat our enemies. And so victory is easily lost and the lots are cast against us. When you put yourself above God, your desires, your wants above his, you open yourself up to defeat and constant attack. The pleasures of the flesh shall not or should not ever be our goal. When we seek the pure victories, if we have the pleasures of our flesh in control of us, we're not going to get the victories. We're saying no to victory because we're in the wrong frame of mind, the wrong attitude. And we fail. You see, Solomon, when he said, and all that my eyes desired, I did not refuse them in any way. What was he signifying? Take what I want. I'll do what I want. Mm -hmm. I'll take what I want. I am the final authority over my life. And we can get caught in that same trap. And it's not a good trap to get caught into. Really, it's not. And it's 
so easily done. We, we start worshipping the things of the world. Oh, I want this, I want that. It would, it's, uh, what is going to give me pleasure? My way. Have you ever noticed that when you get the pleasures out of the world that they don't last? <coughs> and then there's a penalty to pay for them after. Well, that's what he was... He went through this. That he had to see that even though he was given wisdom, he needed discernment along with it. Because <laughs> you can make wrong choices, even if you're the wisest person on earth. You can still make a wrong choice. You can start seeking the things for your flesh and not the things of God. What's going to please our Father in Heaven? What's going to please our Savior? Why aren't we listening to the Holy Spirit? I mean, what do we say? Well, I'm not hearing from him, or I don't know what he's saying to me at this time. Well, maybe it's because you've been looking at this refusal of refusing what God has to offer so that you can look good in your own eyes. And it makes a difference.